Nim, it's a programming language that it seems is really efficient, but as a bonus, and the thing that I wanted the most is along with that efficiency comes elegant syntax. Now, that is critical and key to me, obviously, with things like we look at Rust, for example, which has all these built-in safety mechanisms that are very necessary, especially when you're running at high scale and you need reliability for uh, for concurren concurrency safety, memory safety, and it still performs as well as C, that's amazing. Though it's quite syntax heavy with Rust, comparing that with NIM, where it's achieved a lot of its inspiration from programming languages like Python. The great part that we see here with NIM is that it's statically typed and it's compiled, and that allows the compiler to take uh, all, all of the user's ideas and inputs uh, using the simple simplified language. I just want to scroll that really quick. Look how, let's see, look how clean and easy this is. Very simple, expressive syntax. We can see there's minimal symbols that are being used. I really like this. It's clean, it's easy to read. You kind of know what's happening here. Just taking a look, we can see that the, we're defining a person, which is an object type that has two, two elements here. We have uh, a name and age of string and natural. Okay, I guess this is gonna be a, a, positive, a positive integer. And then you easily instantiate them. That's really simple and clean, I like that. It's really easy to understand what's going on here. The NIM programming language just has a, a lot of built-in efficiencies and an overall excellent developer experience when you're actually writing the code. One of the things that I really like about NIM that it comes with that extra performance that you get with languages like Rust and C because it mostly is, it compiles down, as far as I can tell, it compiles down to C, uh, which is uh, cross-platform compatible. So you get these native dependency free executables that don't have virtual machines and are really small. So that was, that's actually another really bonus thing. So when you compile Rust, for example, you get these very big bulky binaries, even when you target for production, right? Outputs, they're like megabytes and megabytes of, of, this, of this file. However, when you do the same thing, like in C, you get like file sizes that are, you know, kilobytes, which are very tiny. Comparatively, now NIM gives you as well, very small uh, uh, and easy to redistribute uh, binaries as well. Great to see that it covers the major platforms like uh, Windows, Linux, BSD, and Mac OS. So that when, what's hard usually when you're building cross-platform binaries is that you have to be aware often of some of the kernel APIs in those platforms. NIM takes care of this for you. So now you can write uh, IO code is easily uh, as you would or even more easily than in any other language and it will automatically compile down to the right uh, target for you this is a big one memory management we're just talk talking about nims features now the the tricky part is being able to prevent the user the developer who's writing the code from making accidents right because so, it's really easy to do some whoopsies i forgot to instantiate a verb or allocate memory or deallocate memory and free so which you know, causes leaks. This is problematic because now you've created uh, code that you would deploy to production that creates bugs that are hard to find. They used inspiration from C++ and Rust, which allows you to uh, have better, ah, better memory safety. Okay, with the move semantics. So often another challenge is when you're dealing either with concurrency or ownership or just general ways to access memory. Once you've already allocated it, the problem can be if you have race conditions somewhere with the in the memory, you might have two threads that are trying to access the same thing. And the idea with the move semantics, it kind of tells me it's uh, ownership level of variables within certain scopes, right? Within context. So that way any of those routines will will be able to prevent access from memory from other routines. And then here's where the performance comes in with zero overhead iterators and compile time evaluation of user-defined functions, which is also another Rust and C++ level thing where you can build in additional uh, you know layers of logic in your in your programming language. As you're writing code, you can define functions that will then be pre-compiled rather uh, at compile time. And this gives you an extra level of safety. Now, this is unexpected. This back end for JavaScript. Uh, what's going on here? Apparently, uh, I was reading a little bit more. You can write code in NIM, deploys compatible code for both the front end, 
right? And a web browser and a, a server for your backend infrastructure. And you can do this using only NIM's programming language. Now that is satisfying. I'd like to see how that works. Taking a look at NIM's recent articles announced that they have version 2.04 and 1.62 release. Ah, okay. The 1.620 uh, is an LTS and the latest version is 2.04. And what's fancy in 2.04 is that they've added some interesting concurrency capabilities with multi-threading. There's this handy utility that lets you choose the compiler that's active, the, ver the compiler version that's active. Choose NIM is a, a but also if you're not on. Oh, oh, but if you're on, if you're using ARM on one of the new Apple Silicon, uh, choose him will not work for you. Uh, so you have to just manually install it. Okay. NIM includes JavaScript compilation. What? So the NIM programming language lets you write code using NIM syntax and target output for JavaScript. Now this should work on, it says here, first class support JavaScript for the backend. So you can target client and the server effortlessly at the same time. This is pretty interesting. So we see an example of what that syntax look like. I was really curious about this. What is it? So you just import DOM, right? So a document uh, object model here, define a function, and then you just use it as you would JavaScript. Oh, interesting. It looks almost exactly as you can. Well, there's no semicolons, though it looks very much like JavaScript. So we've got our function here on load. We get the DOM event that occurs. We're going to create an element. The element is going to show click me as word. We get to set the uh, style. And then we add an event listener on the hello. Oh, OK. So when you click, uh, in this case, the code is showing. When you click on the the uh, a paragraph HTML element, it's going to add, there's an event listener that's just going to trigger a hello world pop up alert window. Pretty simple example. Also pretty neat that you can write this using NIM and then target compile to just taking a look at the snake game really quick here that, you know, obviously we've got uh, a whole bunch of just really clean. I, I mean, there's, you know, this ca case statements are always pretty uh, repetitive here, though it is very clean. And this is fine because we're mapping key key inputs from your keyboard. It's really nice not having to look at a whole bunch of curly braces everywhere, although you kind of know where things are based on they're taking that idea from Python where indentation uh, is going to represent closure oh I just said there are no curly braces and look at what we see just right here just when I thought we weren't gonna have to deal all right well I don't see a whole bunch of curly braces just every now and then so we don't have to use them very often that's uh, that's pretty obviously it's not hard to type a curly brace I'm just saying minimal syntax and minimal code, the, b the better. Because every single character, every single keystroke is, you know, essentially debt, right? It's code debt. Uh, someone else is gonna have to come along and read these symbols and know what they mean. And so when you see things like this, it's pretty easy. Okay, it's a function on game start. So when the game starts, we're gonna add some event listeners. It's just really elegant. I like reading this code, it's pretty fantastic.